Greetings and welcome to Prayer for America and the Nations. I'm Walter Zagarevich with Global Vision Ministries. And today I'm being joined by a very special guest from Canada. But before I present him, please do what we always ask you to do. Take that phone or whatever you're watching on, if it's on the computer, and press that little share button right now. And that's what I'm going to do because... Uh, uh, I want people to hear, I want people to know, and to be able to also be blessed as together we pray, and together we see, uh, hear words of encouragement, we pray, we agree, and we talk about the things of God. Well, I want to uh, thank you for sharing, whether you're watching on Facebook, on YouTube, on LinkedIn, on Telegram, on Rumble, or on our webpage. There is that little share button, but use it, please, right now. And I see Pastor Jaro's doing that. I just did it. And I know that uh, you will be a blessing to others. Uh, well, I wanted, I already mentioned his name. We have with us Pastor Jaro Lander from the metropolis, well, not quite a metropolis, <laughs> but the city of Bonneville, Alberta. You probably yes. have not known there's such a, a large city there. Well, it's not maybe that large, but we are so glad to have Pastor Gyro on here. Happy Welcome, Pastor Gyro. <laughs> well, thank you, Walter. Always a joy to touch base with friends we've known for decades. And uh, I think I've said it before, but uh, I remember the first time I met you, you were the interpreter for Tony Abram in Chicago back in the early 70s. That's a long time ago. And the glass. You're going to date us. You're going to date us faster. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, I was at your father's home out in California a few years after that. And he showed us how you folks broadcast for the word of God right out of the garage into, I believe it was Latin America back then, but it and, could have been and also Ukraine the Soviet or Union. Russia. Yeah. It's also the Soviet Union. Yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So long, long history. <laughs> Praise God. Well, um, Pastor Jared, there are so many things to uh, pray about. Yes. We're praying for the people affected by this hurricane in Florida. We've received yes. reports back from uh, pastors in Cuba. The pastors we're in relationship with there are fine. They did get some flooding in places. I got pictures of one pastor's home, not in Havana, but in another area that was just badly flooded. They lost their furniture and their belongings, but we know there are people right now in Florida that they're dealing with uh, this uh, hurricane, and also we know there are people st still mourning and trying to find their loved ones in Maui, and we're praying for them, and we know that they're in Canada where you are. Yes right exactly where you're at but in canada there have been some major fires that uh, have affected many lives there and in fact that smoke has gone all the way uh, i understand in some cases all the way to new york city so yeah. we we you are in our prayers and anyone tuning in in florida we've checked in with some of the pastors some of the people mm -hmm. we know uh, everybody seems to be checking in okay, um, but we're praying for those that are, are affected, and we Amen. know that uh, some of you would like to tune in right now. Maybe you haven't been able to, but we are praying for you, and before we go any further, Pastor Jair, why don't we just stop right here and pray Amen. for those to lead us in a prayer? Absolutely. Hallelujah. Father God, we come before you with thanksgiving for the privilege that is ours to look to you, to call upon you. Your word says that you are able to do exceeding abundantly and above whatever we ask or even think or can imagine. And so, Father, we pray today, especially for those caught in the wake of these storms, these fires, these 
floods, Lord God, all across the North American continent. People feel it and across the world in many places. And so we ask in Jesus' name that you would keep your hand over your family, your sons and daughters, and that you would help them to be a hand extended to their neighbors, to their friends, oh Lord God, to those who are in need around them. I pray that you would give them wisdom and creativity, that you would supply their every need, that you would protect them, oh Lord God, from every evil, from every uh, happening, oh Lord God, that is contrary, Lord, to that which is the norm for their day. We pray here in Canada, fires by the hundreds yet, especially in British Columbia. We ask, oh Lord God, that you would spare lives, that you, Father, would touch those who know you to be able to reach out to those that are near them. Lord God, provide for them in Jesus' name. We pray for those in flooded areas as well, Lord God, that have lost their belongings. Some of them have lost their homes, removed from their very foundations, the structures destroyed. God have mercy. May they look to you. May they call out to you in the midst of the storm. In Jesus' name, we pray, Father, for those who are caught down in Florida and other places with hurricanes and cyclones in Asia. God have mercy upon them. And we pray that you would help them, Father, to turn their eyes to the one and only who can help them out of their disaster. Your word says this this poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and delivered him. Hallelujah. And so we pray for them. We pray for our farmers as well. All across this northern part of our world, Lord God, they are in the middle of harvest. Give them weather to bring yeah. in the efforts put from their labors, oh Lord God, in seeding and taking care of their crops. It is all in your hands. And they go out, oh Lord God, as you allow the weather to help them to bring in the harvest they so heartily have worked for. And Lord, we are dependent on that as those who buy. And Lord God, we ask in Jesus' name that they would not lack but that you would supply their every need and keep them, their families safe, oh Lord, from any accidents and any mishaps in this time of harvest. In Jesus' name we ask this. Amen. 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 And Father, we thank you that you have heard our prayers and yes. you hear the prayers of your people around the world. Yes. And Lord, we also lift up Marge and Tony Abram as a yes. mark of Marge's sister, Evelyn. Father, comfort, comfort them, comfort the family and yes. comfort um, um, Marge and, and all the family in this difficult time. My Lord, yes. we Pray for others that are mourning the lo loss of loved ones. Uh, help them, comfort them. Holy yes. Spirit, as only you can, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Amen. Lord. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Well, Pastor Gyro, um, thank you for joining me today, and thank you for leading out in prayer. There are many, many in need of prayer around the world, and yes. thank you for including me. Uh, now and I know that you always have something to share with us. And for those who know uh, don't know Pastor Gyro very well, Pastor Gyro pastors a church in Canada in the state in the province of Alberta, but he also is a Bible teacher and I would call him a Bible scholar. And he as a <laughs> conference speaker, he's a Bible teacher and he's taught in many Bible schools. And we're so thankful that uh, he's uh, put out the time to be here with me. Amen. So thank you, Pastor Chiro, and welcome. Well, thank you, Walter. It's a blessing to be able to be numbered among those whom God have called and chosen to lead his people, to pastor the flocks he's entrusted to us. We are under our great shepherd, of course, and he is the one uh, whom we heed, and it is his words we want to feed the people with. For he commanded us, as he did Peter, to feed the flock, to feed the sheep, the people of his hand. And so in these days where a lot of the people around the world are considering what are all these things? Why all these floods? Why all these fires? 
And of course, we have a segment of society, you know, that uh, are crying out, the sky is falling and, you know, you got 12 years to fix this. And the truth of the matter is they know nothing about that. It's in God's hands. It's in God's hands. And science cannot change what God has preordained or what God allows. And so in spite of the fact that there are many mishaps, there are so much, uh, there is so much stuff going on. God is in control of it all. And he will take care of those who call upon him, who seek his face. And, uh, you know, Walter, in, in light of all that is going on, and there are so many people across the world, uh, social media today is unbelievable because anybody can say anything. And, uh, and so we have this incredible duty of making sure that what we feed our souls upon, what we allow our ears to hear, our words from God are those things that are true and directed by a spirit uh, that is the spirit of truth, the spirit of God, that it is the word of God. And uh, Paul knew very well in his own day, 2,000 years removed, he is telling a young pastor, an evangelist, that he has to be mindful that in these days, these last days, he says, there will be deceitful spirits, and there will be many that will follow, and there will be many, he says, that will be teaching and giving heed to doctrines of demons. I didn't say that. The apostle said that. Jesus himself said, don't be led astray. Don't go here and there because they say there's the Christ. Here's the Christ. And so it's very important for us, the church, the people of God, those who believe that the word of God is infallible and that believe that the word of God is a rule for faith and conduct for the Christian life, that we be careful who we listen to, what we hear. There have been so many that uh, claim to be prophets, have spoken so much, and have said that the Lord told me. And as a matter of fact, we have found out because the prophecies never came to pass. The words fell by the wayside. And that is very bad, as it were, for the church who believes the word of God, who believes that God does speak to his people today. And so we have so many that say, well, do not touch the Lord's anointed. Well, the word of God also says, speak the truth. And so we need to be mindful that indeed God has called prophets and evangelists, pastor teachers, and those whom he has put in place to bring maturity to the body so that he might come and uh, receive unto himself a bride, uh, a family that is pure, a family that is faithful, a family that is heeding the word of God. And as John says, they too cry out, even so, come Lord Jesus. And so we have to be careful because there is a hunger in us to know why all these things are happening. And it seems that there is a rapidity to the happenings and an overwhelming amount of things happening. But all these things should not take us by surprise. Jesus said these things will happen, earthquakes and tempests and pestilences, wars and rumors of wars. But, said Jesus, as Matthew recorded, the end is not yet. So he says to us that when this gospel, when the good news is preached to every panethony, every ethnic group, then the end will come. So we have to be about the father's business. And he has told us that we should go and we should preach the gospel to those who have not yet heard. That's what we should preoccupy ourselves with and be praying about. How can we reach this world that does not yet know that they may come to Jesus before the closing of the age of grace, the church age? That is what should preoccupy us. And that is what we should focus on because Jesus told us, go into all the world, 
preach the good news. And he says, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Teach them these things that I have passed on to you. And even if to the end of the world or the age, I will be with you. So we have much to rejoice in. We have a job. Jesus said, occupy until I come. And so as we go about the Father's business, as we go about following Jesus, we should look at these things and only understand that the time is short, that the day will come when no man can gather the harvest anymore. But at the moment, Jesus said, the harvest is plenteous, the laborers are few. So let's go about the master's business. Let's forget that the world may end in a year or 10. Let us keep looking unto Jesus as we reach out to our friends and neighbors who have never heard. Amen. 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 Wow. You packed a lot <laughs> into that <laughs> statement. Praise God. You know, uh, Pastor Jairo, there is a lot of deception and there is yes. so much uh, distraction or attempted distraction with anything. You just go, you're trying to find something, but all kinds of stuff tries to pop in your way to distract yes. you from what you're trying to do. And as you said, there are many voices, many voices yes. fighting for our attention. And some of these are purely demonic. Some of these are deceptive. Yes. And some of these are just distraction. And uh, we need to uh, get back to what Jesus uh, told us and emphasized, and that is the evangelization of the world. We need to be preoccupied yes. with that. But going back to something else, when that uh, person, uh, that scribe came up to Jesus and said, what is the uh, most important commandment? What did Jesus say to him? Yeah. Uh, the Lord uh, um, is God. Love, yeah. He is one God. He says, love him with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength, God demands full commitment Amen. to him. And that is where I think uh, um, this has been kind of washed uh, uh, or diluted, I should say, in yeah. many churches, try to be more seeker friendly. And, and let me tell you, we need to be seeker friendly. We need to invite people, but we've got to give them the truth. Uh, yes. we, don't water down the gospel. We The gospel will defend itself. Preach the word in season, out of season. And let me yes. tell you, you preach the gospel, God's word will not return empty. It Amen. will have effect on people's lives. It will bring results. We may not see it today. We might not see it tomorrow, but just like that farmer that plants that yes. seed. That it eventually comes out, and not only does it come out as a little stalk, but you get a plant, you get fruit, you get vegetables. Amen. And so uh, plant the seed, sow the seed. And um, Pastor Gyro, I've been talking to pastors in different, on different continents, uh, and um, there are requests for us to go to different nations. We're kind of overwhelmed, to be frank with you. Yeah. And um, But one of the things that I'm finding is some of these pastors are overwhelmed. The harvest is yes. ripe. The harvest is plentiful. There are not enough laborers to gather that harvest. So there's this cry to help train more laborers in different places. Um, we've been talking much about Ukraine here on this broadcast. Yeah. There is such a tremendous uh, uh, harvest uh, taking place right now. The pastors are overwhelmed. They don't have enough time in the day to, to, to work with all of the new people that are coming to the Lord. There's a lack of laborers. And so um, obviously some people fled before because of the war and some of them were laborers. Yeah. And now there's this harvest uh, throughout the land, obviously under very difficult circumstances. You've yeah. got bombs flying, you've got uh, rockets hitting residential buildings and hospitals and schools. And so even a church down in Herson got hit. So this 
Uh, so in the midst of it, but I see that pastor resilient. They went down the roof burned, the upper structure of the church burned, but he get got down in the basement and they're still holding services. And we're not going <laughs> to let the devil stop us. We're going to keep preaching. Amen. And they get just found the basement, clear it down, whatever they could that was still usable there. They lost their sound system, everything upstairs, but they just got down in the basement. They said, we're going to keep having church and we're going to keep Amen. doing God's work and we're going to keep feeding people we're going to keep doing what we're going to we were doing because we're not going to stop and that's that's that determination that we need isn't it, that's brother? right perseverance right Amen. i remember the story as you would know dietrich bonhoeffer during world war ii right some well-meaning american friends told him you should pull out of there you're valuable come away from the war and so he did right he came to philadelphia and he worshiped with the saints here but there was this tugging in his spirit that it was not right to be in safety while the sheep that loved god in germany were suffering and so he packed his bags went back to germany to minister to the flock that was there he persevered and you know just a few months before the war had ended they took his life. They hung him. And yet he was true to the calling of God, right? A shepherd does not run. A shepherd does not uh, say what they are paid to say. They say what God says. And that was Dietrich Bonhoeffer. And for that reason today, I believe we have his books and lectures on his life and his pastoral ministry. And he was one of those stalwarts that we like to even quote, right? He said, Jesus said, come and die, not come and dine. <laughs> we are so used to that in the North American context. But the call was to die, pick up your cross follow me or you are not worthy of me. Thank God for the likes of Dietrich Bonhoeffer as those shining lights along the way as we minister that say to us, we too may not have our lives spared, but we can be used of God amidst the trials and circumstances of life because he is with us and has promised never to leave us nor forsake us. Amen. Amen. And it is uh, placing priorities where they belong yes and i think that we all um are faced with many things we could get busy just with life mm -hmm. but where is your priority where is my priority when life is over on earth what mm -hmm. will count i i saw a picture yeah. somebody uh, showed a picture of two uh, grave holes and, and on one side, they put a poor man. On the other one, they put rich man. It was just the same hole in the <laughs> ground for both of them. So yeah. at the end of life, they both ended up, you know, basically in the same place. But what was left? As someone I remember, a pastor uh, preaching a funeral, and he said, you know, um, they put on the gravestone from this year to that, that year, the year they were born, the year they died. And there's just a little dash in between those two numbers. Yet yeah. that dash represents that whole person's life. The 40, yeah. 50, 60, 80, 100 years that they lived here on earth. What did you do during that dash mm. from that year to that? What will count? And yes, God wants us to be blessed. Yes, God wants us to have good clothes and a good car and a good house. But God wants to bless us so that we may be a blessing to others. Amen. So that we could Amen. extend God's kingdom so that God's kingdom could have people to back it up and finance it and, and extend it to the nations of the world. As you know, I'm, I'm glad that you brought uh, so many things up, uh, Pastor Jairo, but one of them is that uh, there's so much preoccupation by some people well, okay, this is the end time, so this is going to happen. So what do you do? Are you just going to fold up your hands and just 
put on the robe and <laughs> wait for Christ to show up. No, uh, he told us to, uh, he wants us to occupy until he returns. He, not just Amen. occupy, he wants us to advance his kingdom. And Amen. this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached on yes. in all nations, unto all nations. So, and I believe that means to every ethnic group, not just Amen. to every national, uh, you know, every border of every nation, but to right. every ethnic every ethnicity in the world and let me tell you the gospel is going forward and uh, we, uh, this war in ukraine has caused so many people to be uh, some fled some were just ran from the war but you know god is working not only in ukraine god is working in other countries i just spoke Amen. with a pastor we know in spain and they have planted a number of churches there. And um, we're going to help them with a Bible school there because they're short on leaders. He said, we don't have enough pastors. Uh, we don't have enough leaders with so many people coming to Christ. And we're planting more churches. And so Amen. again, there's that cry of, 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 of from someone who's overwhelmed with the harvest, and, and that's yes. what we should be busy about, the harvest, gathering in the harvest while it is day, while we have that opportunity right now. And you uh, alluded to the farmers. Uh, uh, and and yes. you tell us about, you know, most of us are far from farms. Well, tell us a farmer's life, what it's like. <laughs> well, let me have a Chicago kid tell you about farming. <laughs> <laughs> because that's where I grew up. Uh, but I live, of well, course, what it, in what I mean, North because you have you have farmers in your church. Oh, and I know yes. with yes. them. The thing is that we who are city folk, I was born on a farm, but you asked me about the farm. I don't remember a thing because I wasn't <laughs> I, I was not even one year old, I think, when we yeah. moved out of that farm. So I I I'm told that I was born on a farm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the farm looked like. I don't yeah. <laughs> you know, I was brought up in a city. Um yeah. so what happens is, you know, the, I understand the kids in New York think that milk comes from a fridge, not from a cow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so <laughs> So, but tell us uh, in, yeah. in terms of what it's like, because I think that we can understand the harvest and we can understand prayer yeah. better. We can understand the labor of, of preaching the gospel, sowing seeds, because Jesus used the example of the sower. He used the example of what a farmer or someone who sows a field would do to understand through that parable right. um, the preaching of the word of God. So that's why I'm asking, because I know you've got farmers there in your yes. church. I know yes. you're interacting with them all the time. <laughs> well, as you know, Alberta is gas, oil, and agriculture. And so most farmers, to make a decent living, they can't do what they used to do in the old days, right? You just uh, grew wheat or you grew uh, canola. Uh, and, and so our farmers in this part of the world here, uh, if you were to drive through in the middle of July and in the top of August, you see the beautiful yellow fields, right? Canola because of the canola oil. So it's what they call a cash crop, right? Every farmer grows canola, but there is also, of course, uh, lentils, uh, red lentils, and we have wheat, we have barley, we have peas. So our farmers are busy, right? When uh, April comes, these fellas are in their shops getting ready the machinery that will do the work of planting the seed. And so they're mechanics. And they are, you know, in their coveralls and they are, uh, you know, with hands that are greased up, ready to prepare machines for the harvest. And then comes the planting season. And of course, they're out there full force and they're planting what they call now zero till, right? They don't have to herald the land. They, it just shoots the seed into the ground. And so they'll be doing that for two or three weeks. And then, of course, within a week or so, they have to spray. So they get their sprayers out and that those machines have better be ready to go. And, uh, and then, of course, you need rain. <laughs> and lots of it at the beginning. And to be honest with you, farmers are a people that live and work by faith. 
They do the part they're demanded to do. The hard work of fixing machinery, preparing machinery, and then planting the seed, which costs hundreds of thousands of dollars. They have mm. to go to the bank and they have to say, look, you loan me. Well, I'm just using a figure here to simplify. You loan me a million and I'll bring a million back in four months, you know, or whatever their time frame. And, uh, and so then they need rain. Now they can't do a thing about that at least not in our part of the world, right? You can't plug in the holes and, and go water the fields. They wait on God and the church prays with them. And so then the rains come and hopefully enough of it. And you see the crops shoot up and the fields are full. They're beautiful. And then of course, now you want the rains to stop because it's time to pick up the harvest. And sometimes that's what you get, right? They will go through all of harvest in good weather. We're right now, Walter, in the middle of that. Our farmers have picked up the peas and they are going into the fields where they will pick up the lentils if they grew them or the wheat or the barley. And now because they can't just live off the fields, they have cows. <laughs> so the cows need rain for grass. And so it's a mixed bag. We want the rain, but not too much rain. And so they have the cattle. They have to feed the cattle. The cattle give birth. They have to separate the calves from the mothers, which is a task. And, uh, and then they go off into the fields and then they come back home. Well, they make silage. Silage is a mix, right, of, of all these things grown in the field to feed the cows in the winter. And so it is a lot of work, but the happy time is now coming upon us. September is a busy, busy month for farmers. Their machineries are going like at seeding time 24 seven when possible. And they are worn thin and they will do that for about a month. And then the harvest is in. And then of course you have to ship that out of the farms into right the rail stations that will carry it across the country and into the world where this is needed. And so our farmers are a huge cog in this whole wheel of making life feasible, possible for people, not only here in Alberta or down in Illinois or down in Kansas, but all across the world. If our farmers fail, we feel it we go hungry, we pay more for food. So there's a lot of preparation. There's a lot of exercising of faith and believing God that we did our part, oh God help us and help us to get rain and good weather so that we can pick up what we put down. And so God's in the middle of that, right? It's not just the incredible acumen of our farmers. You know, farmers, they just sometimes say, I hear so often, I'm just a dumb farmer. Well, this dumb farmer is a welder. This dumb farmer is an engineer. He's a herdsman. He's a doctor many times to his own, uh, you know, cows giving birth. Uh, he understands mechanics. They're inventors and fabricators, you know, just dumb people. <laughs> <laughs> So, so you mean uh, the milk is not just from the fridge. It actually comes from an animal called a cow. <laughs> yeah. When I left Chicago, I realized, you know, that uh, there's a lot of work before that carton gets to that or that plastic bottle gets to the, you know, uh, the, the uh, what do you call the grocery store shelves, right? Yes. And so it's an incredible, incredibly intricate system that links everybody, this idea of farming. We are dependent on them. So and, and we should so be grateful. Let's, let's take that in relationship to prayer, in relationship yes. to the preaching of the gospel. Uh, sometimes right. people think, okay, I pray and that's it, and it's just going to show up. Well, sometimes it does. But sometimes it's like we just heard you plant that seed. There's all kinds of work. What? You water it. How do you yeah. water it? With the word of God, with prayer, you know, with faith. You mix faith with that prayer. And, and, uh, and then eventually you see that stalk starting to come out of the ground. And that's and right. It eventually comes the harvest. And that's where sometimes 
believers get uh, so discouraged, unfortunately, because they did not see that result immediately. That's and right. uh, uh, and, and so they they just get throw up their hands and they say, look, God didn't hear my prayer. God doesn't want to hear my. Well, it's not that way. You're planting. And, and let's talk about the preaching of the gospel. I know one yeah. city in Java where someone had gone for five years, not one convert. And then suddenly a pastor goes there. He was led of the Lord. And there's, you know, I come to preach. There's a beautiful church there yes. and with a lot of people. <laughs> and and so, uh, you know, someone was sowing. So when it, it, the yes. result didn't come right away. Uh, That's but, right. But, you know, you know, uh, Walter, right? Not, not even related to farming, but forestry, right? Uh, bamboo. I had an aunt who had a beautiful bamboo. Uh, I don't know what you call it, just like a forest, right? In her backyard. This is back in Brazil. And I used to love running right through those bamboo fields and and uh, you know you shake those bamboos they're 80 90 feet tall but when you plant bamboo you put the seed down you see nothing for about five years you would think oh i must have done something wrong or you know uh whatever a blight a hit the the seeds all of a sudden in that fifth year that bamboo shoot comes out of the ground and in a year's time it'll surpass 75 feet nothing grows that fast right and yeah. uh, and so it's a matter of like you said in Poltava if it was right this church yeah, somebody planted the people prayed and watered it with their tears and called upon God and it seems like you know it's ineffectual well Isaiah made it clear to us, God spoke to him and said, my word does not go out and return unto me void. It will accomplish that which I sent it forth to do. And so in some places, right, uh, you preach the word immediately, there's a response. Other places you preach and you preach and you pray and you disciple and you see almost nothing. And then all of a sudden, as you say, a church is planted and uh, it's not the rocks crying out, it's people crying out to God. And Please. so, yeah, we cannot uh, give up because we don't see results. We persevere because we've been told to go. One preaches one plants, one waters, it's God who gives the increase. So Amen. we don't stop until God tells us it's time to move on. Amen. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm so glad that you brought this up because I think that sometimes churches, congregations have lost sight of their primary, yes. what I believe is their primary purpose. I mean, yes, God wants the church for fellowship, for encouragement, for growth in our faith, but it's more than that. It's to evangelize the world. If the church is not doing that, who will do it? Uh, right. Yes, we're, we're very much involved in humanitarian relief, but with that humanitarian relief, the gospel is being yes. Wherever food is given out, it's not given as a condition of receiving right. that food or that medicine or that water that we're helping to supply, but people are being offered not only the physical bread, but the spiritual bread yes. because they can eat and die tomorrow from the next shell, the next bomb or a rocket that yeah. falls. But if they come to know Jesus Christ, they will die and know that and go to eternity with the Lord. And that yeah. is why we need to not lose sight of the fact that Christ has called the church to evangelize the world. Amen. And, and, yeah. and that's what what um, I'm I'm really uh, um, uh, impressed. But, you know, your church is not a, a mega church, but you do much for missions around the yeah. world. Got Amen. your eyes set on evangelizing the world, and you've helped to evangelize yeah. different parts of the world. Uh, that's right. it, Places like Armenia and Ukraine and Asia and different places yeah. and Russia. And, and, you know, 
that's what sometimes people stop and think, who, what can I do? I'm just in a small town or I'm in a village or I'm the so-and-so. What can I do? You can do much if you Amen. just... If you just focus on what God purposed you to do, and, and we as a church yes. need to stay focused on evangelizing the world, all of these Amen. things, we're not going to just put on a robe and wait for Christ to return because the Bible says that these things will happen. Yes, they will happen, of course. Yeah. But it doesn't mean we stop working. We keep working even harder to bring Amen. more souls into the kingdom. And as you said, and this gospel of the kingdom shall we preach, it's all this, and then the end will come. You see, Amen. if we want Christ to come sooner, we will preach the gospel more. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And the thing is, you know, you, you had mentioned before, right? The two graves. Yes. They're the same depth, same width, right? The same length, yes. rich or poor, you can't take it with you. Uh, I don't know if you remember a Lowell Lundstrom. Lowell Lundstrom was uh, an evangelist, he traveled across America and Canada, him and his family and his brother Larry uh, and their family. Lowell was president of Trinity Bible College in North Dakota when I was going there for Bible college. And I remember Lowell's uh, worship band singing a song that uh, alluded to the fact that I've never seen a hearse pulling a U-Haul. And that's the truth. Uh, you know, when all the traffic in California, right? These multi lanes, you never saw a hearse pulling a U-Haul because you can't take it with you. And the church should know that better than anybody else, right? And then we want to save and we want to uh, provide for future generations. And it's true, we should, but... Jesus said, store up treasures in heaven. And he said it very clearly. If you give to the poor, you lent to the Lord. So we should be focused on how we spend our money. And that God is not saying you cannot enjoy good things in life. But the important things, the only things you'll take to heaven, the only things that are eternal are the souls of men and the word of God. And our job is to bring these two together so that, as Peter says, in ages to come, he might have glory and praise to his name. And so we need, he need to be mindful of that. Yes, provide for your flesh and blood, right? A righteous man will leave an inheritance for his children and his children's children. But a righteous man will also do much for the kingdom of God. And mm -hmm. I think of Barnabas of old, right, who had properties. And the word of God says in the book of Acts that he sold a plot of land and he gave the money to the apostles so that others could be fed and housed and clothed. And we ought to have that same mindset that we are here not just to provide for ourselves, but we are here to provide also for those upon whom God sets his gaze. He sees them and he expects us to give toward them. The most important thing we can give them is living bread. And they need to hear the word of God. In those four uh, lepers back in the days of the kings, they were outside the city. The enemy surrounded. God routed the enemy. And they went into their tents and saw food and clothing, gold and silver. And they, of course, were excited because they had nothing. But then together they said, what we do is not right. This is a day of rejoicing. Let us go and tell them at the gate that there is food in the camp. And that's what we are to do. We're nothing but those that tell others where the bread is. And so we need to be about our father's business. Amen. And, you know, I think sometimes uh, churches will embark on a uh, very expensive building program yeah. or something, and then they just cut off mission support. They yeah. think, well, we'll get back to that when we get our building. Um, I think they're shooting themselves in the foot when they do that type of thing or take that attitude because unfortunately missions is not just a little extra something. That is the yeah. life of the church. That is the Amen. purpose of the church to Amen. evangelize the world. 
And so um, I don't begrudge any church that wants a better building, wants to build it, but set the priorities where they belong. Remember yes. that your task, our task as the church is to evangelize the world, the world nearby and the world far away in other nations. Well, um, there was so much, and, and uh, as I started earlier, uh, Pastor Gyro, um, we're, we're kind of overwhelmed with, with the different requests, yes. hearing the hearts of these pastors, wanting uh, j- just wanting more laborers to gather in the harvest. And there is a yes. harvest around the world that needs yes. to be gathered right now. And so um, I want us to pray. pray the, Jesus said that we should pray to the Lord that he would yeah. set papers. So let's pray. Maybe you could lead us in this prayer. And then we want to pray for needs of people. There are people that write in with prayer requests for healing, yes. breakthroughs, prodigals, uh, for situations they're facing financially and their family on their home. But right now, let's pray. Let's pray for God to raise up more laborers, to send more laborers. Uh, And perhaps someone listening right now, maybe God is speaking to you. Let me tell you that God has a plan for your life. God has a purpose for you, and he wants to use you, uh, whether in your local community or abroad. Just give your life to him and say, Lord, here I am. Use me um, wherever you want to use me, however you want to use me, and he will. But Pastor Jairo, would you please pray? Sure. Father, your word tells us clearly as your son declared it to us he said pray ye the lord of the harvest that he would send labors into the harvest field so we are coming to you father as according to the command of jesus your son our savior that you would send forth labors into the harvest field and father we know that you want to save them you want to draw them to yourself Father, we know that in certain segments of the world, you are giving people visions and dreams that they should seek out a church, that they should seek out individuals that you direct them to that will lead them to eternal life through the teaching of your word. And so we pray that you would send forth labors, that you would awaken, O Lord God, the youth of the church, Lord, and also those, Father, whose hearts are to please you who have made it their ambition to be pleasing to you, that you would rouse them up, that you would call them forward, that you would send them out, that they may, Lord God, assist and that they may reap a harvest that is ready. As your uh, word declares, there are those who are seeking, O Lord God, for those who would tell them the way, who would speak to them truth. And so we pray, lift up, O Lord God, this army of work that will go forth in the name of Jesus, being assured that you go with them, hallelujah, and that you will direct them, O oh Father, that you would put words in their mouths. They should not be worried about what they should say, and that you would bring them, O oh Lord God, before whatever audience you lead them to, and they will be more than adequate to deliver the word of life, that those who are, Lord God, responsive to it will have life eternal. And so we pray for Walter. We pray, oh Lord God, for this ministry as it goes forth and as it provides leadership for those seeking to serve in the kingdom. Lord God, that you would protect them, that you would provide for them, that you would cause, oh Lord God, all pieces to come together so that your kingdom would prevail. Jesus told us that the gates of hell would not prevail against the kingdom of God. And so we trust you in that and ask that you would launch, that you would send forth labors into the harvest field for the glory of your name and the good of the peoples. Amen. 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 And Pastor Jairus, I mentioned there are people that have needs. Um, Yes. Um, they write in and I'm not going to mention by name, but we want to pray for those. Some people are able to watch this live right now. Some people will be watching it later at different time zones. 
but um, God's word has gone forth. I believe that God has touched Amen. lives. And I know that uh, there are people that are looking to the Lord and they need that breakthrough. They, um, they prayed and, and I just want to encourage you, just as we talked about the farmer sowing seed, they don't see the harvest the next day. Yes. As, as you pray, that's the beginning. That's the start of the process. God has to put things together. Yes, sometimes it's an immediate result. Sometimes there is a process and it begins at the moment that you pray. So don't get disappointed um, when you don't see the immediate result. Amen. Don't lose your faith. You just begin to thank God that he has heard your prayer and in faith, keep moving forward until you see that process go through and that result, that answer come in, into visible form. So I just want to encourage you to uh, stay the course. Keep faithful to God. Uh, God's word does not return void. So as you pray, mix God's word with your prayers. Amen. Quote the scripture, say, Lord, your word says. And that is so important because God's word is does never Amen. return empty. Pastor Jair, would you pray for people? Uh, sure. sure. You want to say anything else to them, but would you pray for them? Yes, I want to say this, you know, uh, the idea of, uh, doing the work, preaching the word, sowing the seed and not seeing results uh, that they can become discouraging. Yeah. And um, I, I just remember, and this is going back years in my life, in a particular season of my life, I was doing construction. And I remember these two young fellows that were co-laborers and, um, you know, they were into the rock music scene and Black Sabbath 666, you know, and uh, they would ask me, they would say, well, what's, what does this mean? You know, they talk about the book of Revelation. They talk about the mark of the beast and 666. And so I can remember for months, we would talk about the Bible at lunchtime. We would sit down and, and they always had questions. One of the young fellows was a fellow who attended church quite regularly in a Catholic tradition. And the other one, the whole family, they never. And so I can remember one day we were on the construction site up on the roof. And I'm witnessing to this fellow about just how it is that you can be sure that you have eternal life. And I could sense the Holy Spirit on that roof. It was just kind of a different feeling. I knew God was over that conversation. And I never brought that conversation to a close, right? And, and driving this young fellow for a decision to receive Jesus. And I remember I'm in the shower at home getting cleaned up later in the evening, right, for supper. And, and I'm, I'm saying to the Lord, you know, forgive me. I, I didn't, you know, show courage in, in pressing the issue. And uh, as I was getting out of the shower, drying up, the phone rang. And back in the old days, remember, they had the long cord phone on the wall. And my mother says, hey, this is your buddy at work. He's calling, wants to talk to you. And so anyway, I take the phone and I'm talking to this fella. And he says this to me, right? He immediately says, hey, gyro i did it and i'm thinking donnie what did you do right i did it remember our conversation i was driving home and i'm taking a shower and i was so convicted i gave my heart to the lord and i mean obviously i just rejoice in that he joined a church near his home and was involved in teaching sunday school a few years later but you know i thought that I was the one that was supposed to bring him to salvation. But all along, there was the seeding and the watering, but God gave the increase. Even when we feel that we didn't do our part, leave it to God. He can make up for what we lack. And so we keep witnessing. We keep reaching out to them. So we'll pray for these folks here and ask that, the God, would under, that the God would undertake for their physical needs, their spiritual needs, their emotional needs during this time in our existence. It's great. And so I'll lead in prayer for them and for those who might want to give their hearts to Jesus like that Amen. young man. 
Amen. And there's a friend. There's a friend of ours, and he was a student in our Bible school in Kiev. I'm sure you taught there, and he's uh, he was a pilot in the Soviet Air Force. Well, he came to the Lord as he was there, and I thought you were going to say this man fell off the roof, and he. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> but but uh, Igor was just a new believer, and he was witnessing to his buddies there. Well, uh, they were practicing uh, parachuting out of a helicopter, um, and um, and he says to them, to the other guys, he says, you know what, um, if something happens to me, when we jump right now, I know where I'm going, I've got eternity, but yeah, how about you? And, you know, they're just kind of, yeah, yeah, whatever. Well, what happens, Igor jumps and his parachute gets does not release and gets caught on that helicopter. And he's dangling around, almost caught in the, uh, in the uh, propeller. And uh, he's, he's uh, the helicopter's flying around with him dangling around. And then finally it released and he uh, made his jump. And then the other guys, well... One of the other guys um, came to the Lord right there. <laughs> <laughs> A very, very visual illustration of what could happen. Yeah. Yes, and later, and later he became a pastor and a bishop uh, in, in Russia. So, uh, but uh, but he was a medical doctor. But they all had to do their jumps, and uh, yeah. and and so uh, uh, you know, I thought you were going to say he 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 fell <laughs> off the roof or something. But thank oh, God he didn't, and he got saved. Amen. But you're right, sometimes. Um, uh, you know, there's only so much we can do. We do right. plant the seed. I remember young men in uh, high school, I was giving him a ride to school quite often and I witnessed him, but he came to a point where that was it. He just didn't want to hear anymore. So yeah. I quit uh, talking to him. So I just started praying. I said, Holy Spirit, you talk to him, you deal yes. with him. Well, the next day he's all shook up he says you know what uh i i had this this dream that i was uh, going to hell and i saw myself you know there and what have you and he says i i woke up i i just you know i repented i received christ as my savior so you, you know we do only so much but the holy spirit knows right. how to get a hold of somebody's heart whether through a dangling parachute on a helicopter <laughs> <laughs> or 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 <laughs> or through a dream or or just yeah. speaking into a person's heart and uh, and so maybe you're watching right now and you don't know christ as your savior we want you to know that he loves you he Amen. cares for you and he wants to be not only your savior but he wants to be your lord he wants to be involved in your life and there is that emptiness in your heart that only he can fill. And I want Pastor Gyro to lead you in a prayer right now, receiving yeah. Christ. And then we're going to pray for other needs. But please, Pastor Gyro. Yes. Father, we thank you for your word. It is how we came to see the light. How we came to understand that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. For your word declares it. And Father, there are some listening today, and they may even have gone to church. They may even have been people involved in church, or they may be people who never stepped into a church building. And so, Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you would speak to their hearts, that you would cause the seed of your word to bring forth fruit unto righteousness as they confess their sin as they confess their need of you, I pray that you would hear every prayer of confession, every prayer of supplication for salvation, as they cry out to you to save them, to deliver them from sin and from habits that have gripped their hearts. In Jesus' name, break every yoke and set them free as they give and yield their hearts up to you. Save in Jesus' name for the glory of your name and for their good, and give them that peace that passes on understanding that they may draw near to you and help them to seek out friends and a church body that will help them to grow in the knowledge of you that they may be spiritually mature knowing your word and having assurance of their salvation in jesus name amen Amen. If you prayed that prayer sincerely, Christ has come into your heart. 
do I three know. things each day. Talk to him. He wants to hear from you. We yes. call it prayer, but just converse with him every day. Let him speak to you. Read his word. Don't know where to start. A good place. The fourth book in the New Testament, the gospel according to St. John. The whole Bible is important. This is just a guide to help you to yes. see a good start and your understanding of what is happening in your life and talk to others about Jesus. Start telling other people that you're now a follower of Amen. Jesus. Just like that young man who called Jairo and said, hey, uh, yeah. you know, I I, I, I I, gave my life to Jesus. I Amen. did it. Well, you did it. Now tell others about it and find that Bible-believing preaching church where you can grow in your faith and yes. be encouraged and be prayed for and uh, you can grow. So do that. But Pastor Gyro, let's pray for needs out there. People Amen. Would... Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for this time together and for those who are listening. And some, oh Lord God, are your children and some are in the valley of decision. But people have needs, Lord God, physically. Some need healing in their bodies. And I pray in Jesus' name, because you said that by his stripes we were healed, that you, Father God, would touch them that believe and cry out to you and heal their illness, whatever it is. For you are able to do exceeding abundantly and above all that we ask or think. And so, Father, we pray for those who may have financial needs, for those, oh Lord God, who may need a job that you would provide, that you would open a door that no man can close in Jesus' name. We pray for those who have emotional needs, who are struggling in this time, oh Lord God, of great distress in our nation and in the world today, that you would set them free, for you are able to give them peace that passes understanding. Your word says, cast all your cares upon him for he cares for you and so i pray lord god that they would do just that that you would provide and protect that you would save and deliver that you would heal and set free in jesus name amen amen and amen well thank you pastor gyro thank you You're for welcome uh, me today and thank you to all who have tuned in yes. let's continue to pray for revival in america in canada yeah. in the nations yes. of the world in fact let's do that right now father in the name of jesus yes, pray for spiritual awakening in the nation of the united states and the yes. nation of canada in all of north america central Hallelujah. america south america lord in europe in particular yes. western europe but lord also in asia and africa yes. bring revival to your church and may your church oh. arise strong and with a strong commitment to evangelize yes. this world and lord we thank you that you are working that you are working in Amen. different parts of this nation and in Canada and in other yes. parts of the world. And Father, we pray that more and more Thanks. believers will tune in to you in a way that would bring them to a stronger commitment to yes. you and your purposes for this yes. world. And that is the evangelization of this world. And so, Father, yes. we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you again, Pastor Amen. Jack. Thank you all who have joined us. And remember, yes. don't look at how big that need or problem may appear. Put your eyes on Jesus. Christ is Amen. the answer, And he is much bigger than any need, any mountain you may be facing. And Amen. he has not changed. He is the same yesterday, today. And forever, God richly bless you. And if you want to support any of our missions around the world, you can simply go to our webpage that is over my head, globalvisionministries.org, or you can write to our address, which is also over my head. Amen. And let me tell you, there are needs around the world, and we're trying to do all that we can to help evangelize the nations of the world. God Amen. richly bless you. And thank you again, Pastor Gyro. You're welcome, Walter. Lord bless you.